Hello everyone and welcome to another Guild Wars 2 video. Today I'm going to be talking about some official Guild Wars 2 End of Dragons concept art and explore and showcase it just in case you might not have heard and um, let's just jump right in. Okay, so very first I'm actually going to be going over the official art that we've had for a while now. This was the very first piece of teaser art that was shown to the community. This was on the post that basically announced that they were working on a third expansion, which we now know to be called End of Dragons. This, I think, was labeled as Xingji. So we have the customary art, the temples, the scenery, uh, the beautiful floral. This was just kind of setting the tone for what the expansion expansion was going to be. I'm not necessarily going to dabble on this because this is quite old and we want to get to some new stuff, but I might as well just show all the existing art pieces that we currently have. Next up, we have this piece. It's a little bit smaller in terms of the framing. I think I might have gotten a smaller frame or they might have provided a smaller resolu resolution, but this was labeled from the stream as Xing Ji. So this... I, Gotta admit, I did not play Guild Wars 2 Factions, but this could be Xingji Monastery. I know it's an island uh, to the west of the continent, the area of Cantha. But looking at the actual imagery, it's really much in line with the art style and the color palette that was shown in the End of Dragons teaser trailer or reveal trailer, kind of. It's got these purplish hues, these baby pinks, these blues, these pastel colors, truly vibrant um, color palette. Heart of Thorns had a much darker, um, dark blues, greens, purples. Um, Pathifier had some very um, kind of like normalized flatter purples and reds. This is like greens, pinks, blues, uh, very whimsical and magical but it's wonderful to see some of the architecture closer up um, as opposed to the last one we got kind of a, a distance shot it was mostly the the bell that was the main subject and the arch but um here we have like what seems to be a city where we might be able to go and explore hopefully hit up a couple vendors some currency buying some unique armor some unique weapons some different stat combinations, some runes, etc, etc. Um, but overall, really nice to see, especially the background. It seems to be with mountainous regions. I know there's Sunqua Valley, and then, of course, we have the Fractal Sunqua Peak. I don't know if, if the geography is necessarily as close, but uh, let's continue on to the next one. This one is fantastic. Wow, it's just full, full resolution. Just, I don't want my hotbar showing <laughs> leave there we go it's just perfect resolution fills up the entire screen i'll probably actually set this as one of my rotating backgrounds but this people is echo Valed forest coming from someone who did not play through factions i don't have a bunch of history with echo Valed forest but someone who's been in the community and has a general idea of factions this i think was the like the petrified forest um and if my memory and knowledge serves me right, it seems like it's all kind of being de-petrified or it's becoming more active. There's lights on in the cathedrals. Um, at least I'm pretty sure that these are cathedrals. There seems to be life here. There's actual vegetation that might not have been corrupted by the jade wind. And there's even distant, far up, very tall areas, which gives me a lot of hope that Echo Valve Forest will have a lot of verticality, um, very massive trees. Um, I, I definitely think of Bitter Frost Frontier from Living World Season 3 with that little forest area with just massive trees. Well, that was rather quite rude. My entire computer just crashed. Um, but as I was saying, Echo Valve Forest, very excited. It is beautifully done. I love the line work. Um, these extremely like... It almost feels like I want to, I just want to touch the bark. It just looks like so ASMR satisfying, but really great piece. Really love it. And let's, let's move on to the next one. 
So this next one, I don't know who this is. No one knows who this is um, except the people writing the story and making the game. But um, it was hinted at that this individual could be associated with the Aether Blades. Possibly the my trin is being thrown around. I don't want to make any decisive conclusions or I don't even feel comfortable theorizing who this might be. I just want to talk about the art. This piece is so, so good. And it was also hinted at that this piece might be a part of a cutscene or some trailer. Uh, I think an individual who works in the cinematics team or in the art team was talking about animating this. Um, or it, it could just be an art piece, but I'm pretty certain it was it was discussed in the context of being animated. And I'm very interested to see who this individual is. If this is a cutscene or if they were just referring to the model of the character in game, but beautifully done. Um, the individual was tweeting that this was a Hanbok inspired dress um, from, I'm, I believe, South Korean origins. And it's just beautiful. I love the, the green gems and the, the ribbons, um, the red tags coming down and the hair. I hope we get new hairstyles. The, the green kind of like, it almost reminds me of the jade wind kind of just coming in. And there's a lot of bubbles, which is the common theme for the art pieces going forward. But once again, we have that color palette of the baby pink and baby blue hues and all these really, um, I don't know how to describe it other than like bubble whimsy, like, and it's fitting because they're bubbles, but like the bubble pop whimsy things, but um, really great subject. I wonder who this character is. It's just nice to see any concept art behind behind the scenes or what they're thinking of. I hope that we get to see some um, armor pieces or outfits that resemble, and we're, we're, we definitely are. I mean, we're going to Cantha, so we're gonna get armor pieces that are Canthan inspired. Moving on, we have, I believe, another image depicting Echo Valve Forest. This one with bubbles. Uh, a lot of people are saying that um, it's weird that all the, many of the concept arts that they showed had bubbles and to some extent I agree because it's just like why are there bubbles there's probably a lore reason as for why underwater dragon Kunavang something's going on with bubbles and water um but did they need it to be in multiple art pieces uh, I don't know is Echo Valley Forest Echo Valley Forest is kind of next to the Jade Sea which is probably somewhat not so much jade anymore i don't know but um it's interesting to look at a different perspective of echo Valley forest um seeing kind of it, what looks to just be like a cathedral wall there's not too much dimension going on here that i i can see it looks pretty kind of like flat it almost looks like um ascalon the wall of ascalon uh if you would have been like oh this was an early rendition of the the wall of ascalon i would have totally believed it but the bubbles were a definite standout um, and pop, bring out uh, another pop of color. Okay, moving on to the next one. We have an image of airships with bubbles in the sunlight, if it's the evening or whatever. But we also have an image of what seems to be a flying dragon of sorts. Is this Orin? Is this Kunavang? Is this another dragon? I don't know. I do think that this is probably one of the earlier art pieces for when the commander and the gang go to Cantha. It's probably similar to like the epilogue art where you're actually going to say um, Amnun Oasis. This is probably like one of the very first pictures that we will see, unless this is just purely concept art and they have other art pieces to show uh, in game. But it's really interesting that we get to see a flying creature. Um, we have like probably three options to go with, but if it is Orin, it's nice to see. And I hope that this story better utilizes Orin as an elder dragon figure. I don't I understand why Orin would be in the position of being more of a prophetic stand back in the background, just giving out orders rather than being an entity that is actively fighting. 
or confronting a threat because it would be really easy just for Orin to do everything because she now is an elder dragon. She might be an elder dragon, but she could also not be at the level of the other elder dragons because she is pretty new to the whole job. But uh, if it's Kunavang, I don't know. Is, is Kunavang going to come in at the end of Champions? Who knows? But um, nice to see some airships. Once again, more bubbles. I don't think the bubbles were necessarily needed uh, in this shot, if I'm going to be honest. I'll, actually, I take that back because I don't know how low these airships are flying. Um, they could be pretty low to the, to the water, but it almost gets in the way. I don't know, but it's it's there. It's not awful. Um, I would have maybe redacted that, but um, it adds that consistency of Cantha and what they've been going with for now. I think there's one more art piece, or is that it? No, that is it. Those are all the art pieces that were shown on the live stream. And uh, yeah, I'm very much excited to see more. And I hope that we are all excited for Champions. I'm excited for more of a press circuit a couple months where they bleed out and give out information and we can all cover it and talk about it and get excited for it. Um, but all that said, I hope you guys enjoyed these art pieces. If you'd like to help support me on Patreon, I have a link down below. Thank you to my existing patrons for helping me. Your support is greatly appreciated. And uh, subscribe for more videos. Like the video, if you liked it. Comment below your thoughts on the art pieces. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, everyone.